Hey guys, my name is Dane from Fullstacks and today I'm starting the process of turning my Flutter desktop application into a pure Dart command line application. What I usually do before I write any code is I create what's called a feature spec and that's what I'll be doing in the current focus print that I'll be starting. So just to give you kind of a little bit of a breakdown of how I work, I work in focus sprints, which is short bursts of complete focus on a singular task. Each focus sprint should have a single goal that can be achieved within two hours. And so the first focus sprint will be to plan out what I need to do to complete the CLI implementation for test suites. Feature specs have a very basic set of requirements. So in this case, you'll see that we have a problem. Then I do a solution, which is an English overview of the problem. This is so that the testers of this feature will understand what it's supposed to do. Then I have my technical, which is breaking this English solution into actual code that needs to happen. During this part, I go through the code base. I understand how it's working at the moment and what I need to change to get it working in the new way that I want to. So you'll see things like model updates, model migrations, functionality updates. It's very detailed and that's why I give myself multiple hours. The last thing we do after the technical solution is user stories. That is what you should be able to do in the software after I complete the code. This also helps the testers to know what they need to test and what they can expect from doing those tests. The reason this is so important is because it helps me fully understand and solve the actual problem before I write any code. And that's what's very important here. There's a lot of people that preach about software development being problem solving, which is true, but the problem is solved before you write code. So writing code is not problem solving. It's implementing the solution to a problem. The problem is solved in the step that I'm about to do, which is plan out my feature for the CLI. So once I'm done with that, I'll take you through what I came up with, and then I'll show you how that solution looks. So the feature spec I showed you earlier, I've completed the one for the CLI, and I'm just going to give a quick overview of what I plan to do, and then you'll be able to kind of follow along as I build this functionality over the next few days. So we know that we need to turn test suites into a CLI for it to be able to run on GitHub Actions or Code Magic, And the solution for that is that we basically only want this run test functionality to be turned into a CLI. We don't care about any of the other details of the app at the moment. That's what I stated in the solution. We just want a command like test suites run, and then that it. Obviously, we'll have to provide some details, which I'll go through at the moment. So to implement that solution, the first thing we have to do is get the project data. Currently, test suites is connected directly to Firestore using the Fire Dart package, and we'll use the same one. All we want is a the project info, which is a document. So you'll see this is how the project info looks. And then we also need the test suites, which is a sub collection where each document has the test cases as a list of test cases. And in each test case, there is a set of steps. We want all that information because that's what we need to run our test. We're going to be using Fire Dart as well because Cloud Firestore doesn't work in pure Dart packages because it depends on the native parts of whichever platform it's running on. We basically just want to make sure that the Firebase CLI is authenticated. That'll be the first part. So the user will have to log in through this command as well. And then we're just going to get, like create two type safe functions on the Firestore engines for get project ID and get test suites for the project. And that'll basically be it. The last two things will be passing along the name of the, of the device that we want to run on, as well as the path to the APK or the .app file that we want to install. And then the final thing we have to do is just display the results. So I went with this format. It's going to be starting test run, execute test suite. And then it's going to be the test case name with its steps underneath. And I'm hoping that implementing the orange 
waiting while it's running and then changing it to a tick doesn't take longer than one focus print. If it does, I'm just going to print out the successful steps and the step that may pop up when your tests fail. And that's basically it. On the user stories, you'll see that all I have is that the user should be able to run test switch, run dash P, give a project ID, dash D, give a device ID, dash A, and give an application path. And then the, the test should be running. The final user story is that the test results are reported to the terminal during the command in a readable manner. That will be how you can validate that this feature is working. So, so that is the feature spec. It took me about one hour to get done. Uh, the main reason is I actually go and read through my code to see what I need to change. I don't want to get into the code and then have to do that part. So right now I'm fully primed to just dive into the code and actually get this first feature done. I have an hour left in this focus print, but I'm going to pause it, take a little break, and then I'll come back and do a full two hour focus print to get the CLI connected to Firestore. And then I'll share with you the code I have to complete that task. So see you in a little bit. Okay, so for the second focus print of today, I want to focus on getting the project data. And that requires me to do a few things. And it breaks down into the following six tasks. Six, five tasks. I have to connect to the Firestore authentication. Then I want to perform a Firestore auth. After these two tasks will basically be completed with the authentication part of Firestore. And that will allow us to then connect to the backend and get the information. So we want to set up a Firestore class that connects to our Firestore instance for test suites. Then we want to create the function to get the project info that I showed you earlier in the project. So that class over there. And then we want to also create the function to get the test suites, which was the sub collection of a project to get all these documents, serialize it and return it to us. I'll show you the implementation of the auth after it's done and then the implementation of the Firestore functionality when that's done. Okay, so the first section is done. I can now connect and authenticate with Firestore. And I kind of want to show you some of the code for that. I have set up a separate command called the authentication command. And basically what we do in this one is you just apply your password, or your email, whichever way around you want to do that. I extract that. I then pass it to my authentication service. To perform that, I get a Boolean back. I check if it passes or not. So you'll see that if I use one of my temp users on the backend, I can run this. It authenticates to CLI and then it shows that it has passed. And on the back end, I can see that the user has signed in. A basic overview of the implementation is I just call Firebase or sign in with the email and password. And that's basically it. I've set up a Hive store because shared preferences doesn't work on a pure Dart application because it uses the Dart UI package. And the Firebase auth just requires the web API key, which is the key for our Firebase project. Then you can authenticate to that project. That's basically it. So we have our authentication command complete. The next command I need to complete is the run command. Now, over here, we already start the initialize for test suites for the suite core. So I need to ensure that we get the test step information and then I call the run test and pass all that information to the suite core. Suite core is the code that actually drives the Flutter application. So I'm going to implement that part, which is these three parts. So just setting up the Firestore backend connection, then I'll create these two functions. Once I have that, I can, once I have that data, I can create a test tree, which is the model that I pass to my test runner and then it goes through and runs through all the test suites and all the test cases inside of it. So let me get started and I'll show you how that looks in just a few moments. So as I was busy with the Firestore connection, I realized I needed the project model so that I can sync the project data and then use that locally. So this is how far I got with the Firestore service. 
in about two and a half hours. And the reason for that is I had to migrate all of the models that the Flutter app was using, as well as the Suite Core, which is the package that drives the actual Flutter app. I had to migrate all those models to a new shared models package, which I just created and finished up over here. So that took quite a bit of work. Uh, you can see here that in the commit, there were 184 files that changed and, and updated. That's a lot of renaming, moving, and then like import changes. But I also updated some of the unit tests to ensure that everything still works. So I wouldn't be comfortable with a migration like this if I couldn't run my unit tests, which luckily I can. So I know that all the functionality for the script parsing, as you can see, like running tests and communicating with Flutter driver and checking that the test statuses are correct, all of that still works. So I don't need to do much to confirm that it works. Right now, I only have about 30 minutes left in my focus sprint. So you'll see here it shows about an hour, but I want to use the last 30 minutes of this focus sprint to actually put this video together and upload it to YouTube. So I only have 30 minutes left. I think I might be able to implement all of the Firestore functionality in 30 minutes. So let me get to that and then I'll show you how that looks after. So I completed the tasks for today, which was to basically get the project information into the CLI by connecting Firestore to my pure.cli. I have completed both commands. The first one is authenticate. So this will run before the CI can actually run the stuff. So you'll see that we get an authentication success. And then I can run the command, which is the run command, which will actually run the test. And I'll just take you through the code for that quickly. So you'll see that the first thing we do is get the test suites for the project. Super basic code. We have connected to our Firestore instance. So I go to the projects collection. I get the document for the project ID and then I get all of the test suites. And then the next thing I do is to get the project details, that document that I showed you earlier. And that just shows me that I can get everything and I log out. If there was any type of error, it would have failed. And then push that out. So that is a success for today. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you want to see any changes or any additional things in these videos, I'm going to be recording every day that I work on test suites. I think it'll be quite cool to look back as I'm trying to build the most advanced test automation tool for Flutter teams. If you guys like the video and are curious about the product, head over to testsuites.com where you can learn a bit more. There's a free trial that you can start. It'll take you to a form. All you need to do is submit all of your company details. And then at the thank you page, you will get the download for the macOS and the Windows build as well. If you want to learn about Test Suites itself, go to the Academy page where I have a full eight video course that you can actually learn how to use the project. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you in the next one.